Hey guys, welcome back to Saving Green. Today we're going to take a deeper dive into home energy usage and consumption so you can better understand your energy bill and figure out ways to save money and save energy at the same time. So stick around and I'll show you how it's done. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. Saving Green is your source for sustainability on a budget. And today we're gonna basically show you the tips and tricks as to how to get a better understanding of where you're spending your money on your energy bill and figuring out which devices may be consuming more than you'd like. Now there are a few ways to go about getting a understanding of your energy use. And the easiest way to do it is to just look at your electricity bill, figure out how many kilowatt hours you spend and use each month, and get a sense of which devices, maybe by looking at month over month changes, may be consuming most of your energy. You may find that your heating and cooling is gonna take the bulk of your power use, and that's pretty much the, the case across the board. Now, some energy companies may provide an energy analyzer or a profiler, like what we have here at FPNL. And I'll show you how ours looks, so you can subdivide the energy use into different categories to better understand your usage. So here, if you look at our webpage on FPNL, you can see that the energy bill from basically, uh, this was a little over a year ago. This, this was before we upgraded our air conditioning units and got solar. So this bill was outrageously high, as you can see. Uh, I do also want to apologize for the wind and the rain. It's literally a hurricane going on outside right now, but I just want you to know I'm committed to you guys. So back to the energy bill. So here we see that for this month, we spent $438, give or take, and most of it, 200, uh, sorry, $383 was used to cool. Now again, we live in Florida. We really don't spend much on heating at all, but we do spend a boatload on air conditioning. Our always on devices, these would be our Wi-Fi routers and our cable boxes, things that we tend to just leave on all the time. Of course, water heating, cooking, ovens, ranges, things like that. It's all broken down and it's all right here. And we can basically go in a little bit further. Other parts of the webpage will break this down into a pie chart, so for easier visualization. But nonetheless, we can get a sense of how many dollars literally we're spending on each of these components. It's certainly helpful. Now, if your electrical company doesn't provide such insight, have no fear, you can still figure out what you're spending your money on. And that may take a little bit more legwork. So the next thing you would want to do is take a full energy assessment and appraisal of all your electronic devices. And that's literally going room to room, looking at all of your lights, all of your lamps, all of your computers and iPads, all of your coffee makers and cooktops, ovens, toasters, etc. And figuring out which of these devices you use all the time and get a sense of maybe how many minutes a day or hours a day you may be using each of these items. And from there, you can go a little bit further and looking at the back of each devices. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm gonna link up to that just now. You can look at, well, if I know the voltage, which is gonna be 110 volts here in the United States, and I know the ampage, amperage, which is how much current each device draws, that will be the maximum power output per unit time of use. So for example, let's say that we look at this refrigerator. This older refrigerator is rated at 110 volts for seven amps. That means that it can draw a maximum of 700 watts at any given time. Now, if we run this for an hour a day, that's 700 watt hours. If we run this for three hours a day, that's 2100 watt hours or 2.1 kilowatt hours. And if I know the rate, in our case, 12 cents per kilowatt hour, that's what our electricity is billed each month, then I know that if I multiply 2.1 kilowatt hours by about 12 cents, I'm getting somewhere about 25 cents total of usage out of that refrigerator. Now granted, that's what it's rated at, but that may not be what it actually is using at any given day. And that's where a device like this comes in. So not only do you need, do you need to look at what your devices are rated in terms of maximal power usage, but to get the real-time usage, you need one of these, a voltimeter or a multimeter or multimeter, or a way to quantify and measure directly how much energy or power each device uses. Now, a device like this is plugged into the wall. I've done a few videos using this, one to look at how much uh, efficiency each charging method may use for your phone, but basically all you do is you plug it in and then you plug the, um, you plug the device that you wanna charge or want to power using this particular outlet and it'll immediately start counting down the amount of time that it's plugged in and how many watts it's using in a given take. It will even figure out how many kilowatt hours over the duration of usage as well for easy calculations. So in this example with the refrigerator, what I did is I plugged this in for several days and I realized that over X number of hours it was consuming X number of watts. 
by simply dividing the number of watts used over the hours plugged in, I got how many watts per hour this fridge actually used and converted that into kilowatt hours. Now, furthermore, I experimented a little bit. I realized that every time I opened the refrigerator, 40 watts were used. I realized that when the compressor was on, 300 watts, not 700, but 300 were used. And that when the compressor was off, no watts were used. So the fridge was not consuming any phantom energy, even though it was plugged in, until the compressor was on. So I figured that for about 300 watts over the course of the duration, it was actually working about 15 hours a day with nine hours of idle time. So what I did is I used that information and I went around the house and I did that for a lot of things, for my television, for my Xbox, for my computer, for my stereo system, etc. And using this device and the internet uh, to provide general averages for devices I couldn't measure directly, I got an overview of all of our energy use for a given time. And I put that in an Excel sheet, which I will share with you. So let's take a look at that. So this is the Saving Green Electronic Devices Inventory, and basically it estimates your energy usage over a series of different categories that I arbitrarily made up. The first is appliances, then we have electronics, we have hygiene, which includes like our Neato robot vacuum and our Sonicare toothbrushes, our outdoor, which in this case would be our car charger, our pool pump, and our sprinkler system, and then environmental, things that I thought would improve the environment. So lighting, heating, and cooling, etc. And basically with all these devices together, um, by using the direct measurements on this device, as well as using estimates online, I could figure out how many hours or minutes a day each of these devices used, how much energy each of these devices used while on, how much they used while being plugged in and idle, and using just basic arithmetic, I figured out what rough percentages for each of these devices and figured out that there was rough parity between what this spreadsheet reveals and what FPNL was documenting in terms of overall power use. So let's take a look at this a little bit further. These appliances, of course, I have different refrigerators. We have two refrigerators plus a wine fridge. We have a microwave, oven, toaster, coffee maker, etc. Now for the microwave and the oven, we can't measure that directly because it's plugged into the wall. It draws off a 240, so we're not going to really be able to direct that, directly measure that. However, we know the general wattage of a microwave because it's rated on the microwave itself. In our case, our microwave has a maximum wattage of about 1,000 or 1,100, and basically we use that for a certain number of minutes a day, in this case seconds a day pretty much, and that gives you your total amount of wattage that you use per day, divided by 1,000 to get kilowatts. And then figuring out, you know, multiplying by 30 essentially to get the amount of kilowatt hours per month multiplying by the monthly rate, about 12 cents, and you can see here where these calculations are as you move along, and then a rough percentage. So basically what this tells us is that to run our coffee maker, which is a percolator, for example, we use 1,000 watts while the device is powered on, which actually comes out to be about six minutes a day or 0.1 hours a day. Therefore, it is idle, meaning it's warming our coffee for an additional hour, but it's only drawing, by our measurements, 30 watts during the warming period that comes out to 130 watts per use or per day. We break this out again into kilowatt hours over the kilowatt hours used per month times the cost of that at 12 cents per kilowatt hour. That's 0.1% of our total energy usage goes into coffee each month. So to use our coffee, in addition to the rough cost of the coffee beans themselves, we spend about one and a half cents a day, give or take, uh, on coffee for both my wife and me. So this is kind of how you can go about this spreadsheet, and it's the same thing all the way down. So what are some important take-homes? One, appliances consume about 10% of our electricity, and these are things that we really can't swap out very easily. Yes, we could get a new refrigerator, and we may want to do that, because one of our refrigerators, the um, laundry room fridge, which is an older Kenmore, is about maybe 50% more inefficient than the larger, newer LG refrigerator that we have in our kitchen. Now, what about all of our electronics, our televisions, all of our Sonos equipment, uh, our cable boxes, our printers, our computers, our Nest cameras? How much do those take? Well, not a lot. In fact, 3.7% based on this estimate. So now it kind of begs the question, well, if we unplug our devices every night, is it really saving a whole lot? Well, let's see. Our idle time, which is the amount of time based on the wattage that it's drawing per unit time over the amount of idle hours, which are calculated here in this column. Basically, if I take this whole column here and I eliminate it completely by just deleting it, look what happens. 
it goes down to 1.7. So I'm only saving about 2% total. Now, in this case, because our bill is pretty expensive, it comes out to about nine or $10 that we save a month. Is it significant? Yeah, it's significant. But in the grand scheme of our total energy consumption, is it a big deal? Not really. However, 2% adds up. So if we did take the time, and this is something that you'll have to decide for yourself, is it worth it to go through and unplug your television at night, to unplug your cable box when it's not being used? I would argue for most people, probably not. But nonetheless, it's just important to know where these numbers actually fall so you get a better sense of which devices you may want to upgrade and you may want to unplug. Now, what about all of our personal hygiene equipment? Well, again, not a whole lot. We have some Glade plugins, we have a robot vacuum. I was thinking the robot vacuum, running it every day would take a lot. Actually, not that much at all. In fact, it only takes about a dollar every month to run that robot vacuum. So, definitely a good thing. Um, and then for iron and things like that, yes, for the amount of seconds that you run the iron every day, it's actually pretty expensive in terms of wattage. I mean, that's 1100 watts of just raw heat that that iron is using. But you can see that it's used so infrequently, um, you know, less than, you know, just a few minutes every day, maybe 15, 20 minutes a day, that for the most part, it's really not consuming a whole lot of power and therefore it's not that expensive to run. And that's really the bottom line. It's not only the amount of raw power that these devices use, but the amount of time that they're used each day. Now, if we go back to our big power draws, it is our environmental and our outdoor. Our pool pump, our, we actually don't have a pool heater, but our air conditioning is a huge, huge power source. In fact, we are using almost 50% of all of our electricity still for buying more efficient air conditioning units. Now, we have two three-ton air conditioners in our house, and they're rated at 16 SEER. So, I wanted to kind of gauge how much we can estimate because Energy use from a air conditioner is a little complicated, and there's a few ways we can go about doing this. I may spend some extra time in another video, but a rough estimate is using this, this website here. So basically, if you know how many British thermal units, or BTUs, each air conditioning is rated at in terms of tons, then we can convert this pretty easily because we can know how many watts are used per BTU. In this case, it's about 12,000 BTUs per ton of air conditioning. That's a per hour rating. At 12 cents, which is our local rate, let's say we run it for 12 hours a day for 360 hours a month. At 16 SEER, this is the cost per day, and that's the cost per month. So 194.4, how does that compare with my spreadsheet? Pretty accurate, right? Because I use that calculation into this spreadsheet by basically dividing out the number of BTUs over the SEER rating. So the higher the SEER rating, the less the BTUs in terms of thermal output of each air conditioner. And you can basically run these numbers and estimate, well, what if I upgrade to an 18 or 20? What if I keep my 10? Does that really make a difference? Well, yes, it does. And you can basically play around with these numbers on the spreadsheet and determine for yourself whether it's worth spending the extra thousand or two thousand dollars on a higher efficiency air conditioner or actually whether it's not. So I hope this was really helpful. This was just a bird's eye view of a way to break down each of your electronics into general categories and understand based on the usage and based on the energy that each device draws per unit time, you can actually figure out pretty accurately what your overall bill is. Now in our case, this is still a $400 electric bill. Now we have solar, so most of this is actually a moot point, but this is still the amount of power that we're using as a rough estimate. Are we really drawing this amount every day? Probably not. That's because we have a smarter thermostat that adjusts our energy use a little bit more precisely, but this is a really good start. So I will provide this for you to download. Feel free to edit it at your heart's content, add or subtract items as they fit for you, and I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you soon. Bye.